Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. Today's fun project video, we're going to be making a two layer project with two colors. This project is going to be designed entirely within Lightburn software. Let's start out with the Lightburn software and I'll show you how I came up with this fun and unique design. I'm going to first start by drawing the outside shape. For this, I'll grab the pencil tool and I'm going to start with a line that is angled just a little bit. That looks good and I'll click once. Next, I'm going to press and hold the shift and that's going to constrain this to a perfectly straight line. I'll click one more time and release the shift button. Now this other side is going to angle a little bit more and it's gonna go about another one third taller than the first side that I just drew. I'll click one more time. And when I come back over to the starting area, in fact, I'll even scroll wheel in and zoom in a little bit. When my mouse cursor turns into that little bullseye or crosshairs, that means that it will close the shape. And that is exactly what I did. And there, got the first step done. The next thing that I'd like to do is select this shape and I wanna round the corners. For this, I'll come down to the radius and I have mine set at 0.75 inches. And when I click on that tool, we're going to see each of the corners has a node. This means that I'm able to apply the radius tool. When I scroll wheel in, we'll see once again, once I can apply this tool, my mouse cursor will change into this little crosshairs, allowing it to apply that tool. Pretty cool. I'll repeat this for all four corners. This is looking great so far. A couple easy steps and I already have the basic outline. Next, I'm going to reselect the pencil tool and about halfway up on this long side, I'm going to start the line and when I place my cursor over that line, we're gonna see I got a little squiggly and that means that the line is going to start on the pre-existing line and that's exactly what I need. I'll click and now I will press and hold the shift and I'll constrain that to a perfectly straight line until I get over to the other side and my cursor turns into that squiggly. I'll click one more time and hit escape to finish drawing and escape one more time to reselect my cursor tool. Next, I'm going to import the channel logo, the wolf's head. With that imported, I'm going to move the logo off to the side here and put it on my layer 02, the red layer. And I just picked this layer just because it shows up very clearly on the screen for us. And right now that logo is a little bit too small. So I'm going to draw this so it's quite a bit larger and I'm going to move it right about here. I think that looks good. And while it's still selected, I wanna draw an outline. I'll click on the tool on the left hand side, making sure I've uh, selected the outward. I want round and outer shapes only. This all looks good. When I zoom in, we're also going to see that it added some of these extra elements in here that I don't want to get rid of this. I am going to select the outline that we just did and I'm going to ungroup that using the icon at the top of the toolbar. I'll click off to the side and now when I scroll wheel in, I can select those elements I wish to delete. And here's the other one. I'll delete that out there. That looks perfect. Next, I wanna get rid of the outline that is going inside of the shape for the sign. I'll first select the outline and then the offset outline that we just drew around the wolf's head. And for that, I'm going to join these two shapes together and look at that, the bottom part of the outline disappeared. This is looking great so far. It's time to add a little bit of text. Going to select the text tool and just start typing up here. And I will start with the channel mantra of learn, create, and share. And right now I have everything is left justified or excuse me, right justified. Uh, normally when you type this out, it is going to be in the middle like this or center justified. But here I want it set off to the right hand side. 
that looks good. When I place it down here, I see that it is a little bit larger than I would like. So I'll once again, grab a corner and shrink that down just a little bit. And we'll also correct the spelling error that I have in there. That looks good. The other thing that I'd like to do is right now, all my text on the right hand side here is straight up and down. And I'd actually like to have it match the outside contour of the shape a little bit. So I'm going to go down to the second line and just hit the space bar once or twice. And then down at the third line and hit the space a couple more times. And I'm not looking to exactly match this outside angle. I'm just looking for something that is in likeness. I'm going to shrink this down just a touch bit more. I like that. The other thing that I can do, and I'll scroll wheel in just a little bit, is I think the letters are a little bit too close. So once again, I'll select this text and I'm going to go to uh, the horizontal space and I can start bumping that up a little bit and that just stretches everything out. That is looking good so far and I'm ready for the next line of text down at the bottom here. And I'll type in the laser channel. And this was established in 2022 was the first time I posted a YouTube video with the laser channel. So time has been flying and I've been having a great time making these videos and I hope that you are enjoying them as well. This text box that I just typed out, it's currently still right justified and I wanna change this back to the middle. That is looking good. And I'd also like to change the spacing between line number one and line number two. So this vertical spacing, I am going to click the up button to increase that spacing. And in fact, I'd like to make this just a little bit larger. That is looking good. So there, we're all done with the design work, but we've only got one layer right now. And of course, this is a two layer project. So the next thing I'm going to do is highlight everything within my workspace area. I'm going to control C to copy that and control V to paste that copy. I'm going to move that copy off to the side here. And in fact, I'm going to put it on uh, layer number three, just so that I can differentiate between layer number one and layer number two. That looks good. So this I'm going to have as the bottom layer and this green layer is going to be the top layer. For the bottom layer, all I want is the outside shape of the sign that I'm making. And that means I can go back and I can delete all these elements we just drew in. I'll continue to select and delete everything until I have just the basic shape of the sign. That is all set. And the way that this is going to work is we're going to be gluing elements from the second cut layer on the top of the base layer. And when I zoom in on this layer, to keep things simplified, I'm going to ignore everything on the bottom of the sign and concentrate just on the top. When I look at the graphic logo and the words learn, create, and share, those, those Chad cutouts from the wood is what I'm going to paint black and then glue to the top section of that. Which means when I reach underneath the table here, I am going to be left with basically this uh, template and I'm going to reuse this template because I'm going to use this to make sure that all the letters are properly spaced and in a perfect line I'll of course also use that for the graphic to make sure that all the elements are perfectly aligned in relation with one another. I'll readjust the screen and concentrate just on the bottom portion of the screen. This will be the orange cutout that we have and this is the really easy part. I recommend when you start this project out that underneath the honeycomb, there is that crumb tray. Start out with that clean because we're going to have the little cutouts from like the E and the A throughout all of this text that we're going to want to save those and paint those orange and glue them back in. These letters look funny without those little, uh, little island pieces glued back in. This takes care of the design work that I need within the Lightburn software. It's fun, it's quick, and it's easy. 
I invite you to try out the methods that I use creating this sign. Of course, changing it up to make it your very own sign. The graphic element that I have on my sign, I do have the correct license for me to use that graphic commercially. If you're making a project for personal use, something that you're not going to be selling, I invite you to head over to pixabay.com. They have a ton of free images, perfect for projects just like this. The material for today's project is going to be a high quality quarter inch bass plywood. This bass plywood was sponsored to the channel by Creality. They sent me this nice box of that quarter inch bass plywood. When I take a look at inside of the box, this bass plywood was very well protected in shipping. There's foam protecting all the way around the perimeter of the bass plywood. There's foam underneath and there was also another sheet of foam on top. The other material that I'll be using is going to be a three millimeter bass plywood. This is a smaller sheet that I got from another manufacturer. And this sheet is what I'm going to be using for the second layer that is going to be the letters, the graphic, and the orange that we see on the bottom. Let's jump quickly back into Lightburn software and I'll be showing you the cut settings that I use for today's project. The settings for layer number one, I am going to be using a speed of 10 millimeters per second and a power level of 100%. The pass count is going to be two. On thicker material like that quarter inch plywood, I find that I have much cleaner and better results using a couple passes rather than just one pass. When we look at the top layer, this is going to have the same speed at 10 millimeters per second. The power level is going to remain the same, but because this is only three millimeters thick, only one pass is going to be needed. And those of you with a very keen eye are going to see that I also have a layer five and six, but we don't see that anywhere on my screen. And when I zoom back a little bit, we're going to see that I have a duplicate and this duplicate above on the top here, this is the master file. It's what I used during the dress rehearsal when I made this one to make sure that everything works correctly. That's right, there's a lot of work that goes into these videos to make sure that everything works correctly and I'm giving you good information and directions to follow along. So just for this video, I am going to switch uh, my master file up here uh, over to the same colors down here and I'm going to take what I just drew and I'm just gonna delete that out. I'm going to be running this project with that master file partially because, though well, that's what I used in the dress rehearsal and I also know that that file is properly sized in light burn to fit on the work material that I'll be using in this video. There's the other sheet. The settings in Lightburn look great and all I need to do is place the exhaust hood or the laser enclosure over this Creality Falcon 2 machine featuring a 22 watt laser module. It's going to make quick work of today's project. I'll have all of that set up. I'll cue in some nice relaxing music and we'll watch uh, some segments of the laser cutting out today's project.
everything cut out beautifully on this project so far. This layer number one, I'm going to apply a finish to that using some spray polyurethane. While that is drying, I am going to apply some nice orange paint to this bottom portion of layer number two. I'm going to dilute this paint with a little bit of water and I'm going to use an old micro cloth to apply that paint. I'm actually gonna be using it more as a stain because this has some really nice wood grain and I want some of that wood grain to come through. For the top part of the project, the graphic and all the letters, I am going to be using some nice black paint. And to apply that paint, I have a short bristled brush for that. And to keep the letters from moving around, I have a tool that's used for uh, vinyl cutting, but certainly a needle or a pen is a great way to hold the letters in place while applying the paint and then switching over to the wet area and applying paint. That way I can paint all the letters all at once. When it comes time to glue up, I like using Gorilla Super Glue. I like to use the gel type glue because it gives me a little bit of working time. I'm running a little bit low on this, so I have an alternative here. And this is uh, another nice good product that works. And this gives me about five to seconds working time. So I have a little bit of time to adjust anything if it's slightly out of place, but yet it still cures very quickly. We'll also see that I have the inside part of the letter, well, the number O that goes inside. And then from the crumb tray, I picked up all the little pieces for the E's and the A's, all those little islands. I'll be painting those orange as well. The finished project looks absolutely stunning. This two layer, two color project makes this simple project look a lot more intricate than it really is. To finish this project off, I would apply a couple more coats of the polyurethane spray. I had a fantastic time creating this project and making this video for all of you. I would love to see what your project looks like head over to the Laser Channel Facebook page and post a picture of your completed project. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It's a great way to help this channel grow to connect content like this with other like-minded laser people just like you. Well, until next time, learn, create, and share.